Welcome to section 18 of the viruses. In this section, we will be discussing dengue fever, which you can see right here. Our dengue fever story takes place on this pretty little seabed. We can see this old abandoned dinghy right here on the bottom of the ocean floor. A dinghy is a small boat, such as this one at the center of our story. And this dinghy will help you remember dengue fever. Now look at the pretty rainbow beaming down from the sky above. Rainbows are typically considered to be very positive, and this positive rainbow indicates that dengue fever is a positive sense RNA virus. So positive rainbow for positive sense. You can see that ominous red color in the sky, which also reflects off the surface of the water. This indicates this is an RNA virus. We like to use red warm color schemes for RNA viruses. Now look at this pretty little tree here. It has a sign that reads Arbol. Arbol is the Spanish word for tree. I guess the locals like to label the tree to make sure everyone knows that this is a tree under the sea. Anyways, Arbol sounds like Arbo, as in Arbovirus. Dengue fever is an Arbovirus, which means it is arthropod born or spread through arthropods. Again, Arbol for Arbovirus. Now mosquitoes are the specific arthropods that spread dengue fever. You can see a whole colony of mosquito larvae on the surface of the water here. That is super gross. If this water is stagnant enough to house a whole colony of mosquito larvae like this, I wouldn't go swimming there. In any case, this mosquito larvae will help you remember that mosquito bites transmit dengue fever. Now look at this scuba diver here. I guess he isn't afraid of some nasty mosquito waters. He's pretty brave, but it cost him. He even tried lifting the dinghy all by himself and he pulled his muscle in the process. You can see he just reached for his arm in agony. This represents the severe muscle aches or myalgias that occur with dinghy fever. So again, injuring muscle trying to pull the dinghy stands for myalgias in dinghy fever. This diver was carrying a lamp to light the way in darker parts of the water. I guess he was holding a lamp with one hand and then trying to lift the dinghy with the other hand. He must have overestimated his strength. Anyways, we like to use heat lamps to represent fevers. So this guy dropping the lamp will help you remember that dinghy fever will cause fever which makes sense by the name. Now look at the old dinghy he was trying to lift up. It has this rust all over it. Naturally, metal will rust if it's left in the water for a prolonged period of time. This red rust kind of looks like a rash. People who get dinghy fever oftentimes get a rash like this. Again, red rust for rash. Now look at this second scuba diver. He's traveling pretty fancy. He's got that awesome self-propulsion device. If you look right at the device, it has an interesting icosahedral shape to it. Kind of cool looking. In any case, this fancy device indicates that dengue fever has an icosahedral shaped capsid. So icosahedral shaped water device for icosahedral shaped capsid. Now see this water cooler resting here in the abandoned dinghy? Well, it's full of water. Not that you'd like to drink water that is likely super old. Anyways, in nearly every condition imaginable that you'd be treating as a clinician, maintaining adequate fluid and hydration for your patient is essential to proper supportive management. For this reason, we like to use water bottles or water coolers or water jugs to represent supportive treatment. And when it comes to dengue fever, supportive care is all that can be offered. There is no cure. You just need to support the patient through their illness. And a large part of supportive care is maintaining fluid and hydration. Remember that fancy self-propulsion device shaped like an icosahedron? Well, you can tell by the red metal blades spinning around that this thing is burning up. The guy operating it even pulls his hand away because it's so hot. And when he removed his hand because it was so hot, the device took off and plunged into the back of one of his fellow scuba divers. Look at him reach for his back. It's likely excruciating at this point. This back pain represents the severe back pain that dengue fever can cause. In addition to myalgias, which we discussed with the diver trying to lift the boat, dengue fever causes back pain and even bone pain. In fact, it's this bone pain that gives dengue fever the name breakbone fever. So dengue fever may not kill you, but it does hurt. Well, I'm afraid that one bad thing leads to another in this story. When this diver got his back all thrashed up, he let go of his own propulsion device. Look at it blast up to the surface. That does not look good. But before we examine the carnage above, take a second to appreciate this long line of bubbles trailing the device. Well, this long line of bubbles represents the fact that dengue fever is a linear virus. So again, line of bubbles for linear virus. Now, everything we just discussed pertains to the presentation of dengue fever the first time a patient gets it. Everything here above the water represents dengue fever the second time a patient acquires it. It is very high yield to know that there are multiple serotypes of dengue fever. Like most viruses, after being infected with one serotype, you're usually fine and won't get it again. Now this is exactly the case with dengue fever. What is strange is that a later infection with a different serotype causes a deadly reaction. As I mentioned, the reason for this exaggerated response with reinfection is not well understood. So again, second infection with a second serotype is devastating. 
which you can remember with this devastating crash. Now look at the electric shock waves blasting around the second dinghy up above. I think the electric explosion of the two motors crashing together caused this electric blast. This looks terrifying and deadly. And so begins the chaos of the second infection. These shocking bolts of electricity represent shock, which accompanies the second infection. Again, shocking bolts for shocking in the second infection. Now what exactly causes the shock here? It's actually devastating hemorrhage. Clearly, this shocking explosion took the life of this poor guy on the dinghy above. Look at him floating there on the surface in a pool of his own blood. Pretty sad. All that blood represents the hemorrhage in dinghy fever reinfection. In fact, a better term often used for reinfection with a second serotype is dinghy hemorrhagic fever. So again, dead man in a pool of blood stands for hemorrhage in dinghy hemorrhagic fever. It looks like this man was just trying to have an innocent picnic out on the water in his dinghy. You can see all these plates he brought with him. They shattered in the explosion and are now seen descending to the ocean floor. Well, these broken plates represent platelets. The fact that they are descending downward reinforces the idea that platelets are low, also known as thrombocytopenia. Again, descending broken plates stands for low platelets. Now that we've covered everything in the image, let's do a question to apply what you've learned. A 24-year-old man comes to his family physician with severe back pain, a rash, and muscle aches. Upon further history, the patient says he recently returned from a humanitarian trip to the Bahamas. He states that he has never been there before and he received numerous mosquito bites throughout the trip. His wife said he likely has breakbone fever. If this is correct, which of the following is true regarding his condition? A. He is infected with an arthropod-borne parasite. B. If reinfected with a different serotype, his presentation could be worse. C. The infectious organism is naked and icosahedral. And choice D. He may have diffuse hemorrhage prior to illness resolution. Now hopefully you remember that breakbone fever refers to dinghy fever. And his presentation is consistent with this. He has severe back pain, muscle aches, and a rash. Plus, he was attacked by mosquitoes. So the correct answer is B. If reinfected with a different serotype, his presentation could be worse. Recall that the second infection with a second different serotype is devastating. Now A is incorrect because dengue fever is a virus, not a parasite. Although it is arthropod borne and transmitted through mosquitoes. A good example of an arthropod borne parasite would be malaria, which is a protozoa. Now choice C is wrong because dengue fever is enveloped and icosahedral, not naked and icosahedral. So because this option says naked, we know it's wrong. Recall that most RNA viruses are enveloped, so unless there's an obviously naked person in our images, assume the virus is enveloped. And choice D is incorrect because diffuse hemorrhage would be more likely with a reinfection with a different serotype, like we mentioned with option B. And we have no reason to believe that this is his second infection with dengue fever, so we would not expect diffuse hemorrhage. And with that, you've learned all the details you need to know about dengue fever.